Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Discobot tutorial. In this one, we're going to be creating a vote command. Uh, for this part, the part one, we'll just be doing a simple yes or no voting system, and then at the end, we'll be able to log the results or send it to the channel saying, you know, this is the final result of the the voting or the poll or whatever you want to call it. And then uh, in a part two or a future video, if people want it, we can make it more dynamic so that the people sending it will define, you know, how long the vote has or what emojis have to be used or how many responses there are and so on. So it's up to you to expand upon it. But for this, we'll just be keeping it simple to show you how to set up the basic system. Uh, the main reason I'm doing this is to show you how to use await reactions, which is a function in a Discord library that will um, send a message and then let people react to it and then after a certain amount of time you'll get data back on how people reacted to the message and by reacted I mean using the emoji system if you've used Discord before you'll know what that is and I'll explain to you I'm, I've actually already coded this to you know make sure it all works properly before the video so I can show you it in use then you know delete my code and build it back up and explain it as we go through so yep let's get in let's get into it so uh, I'd like to start off by thanking my patrons thanks to Michael for Baum and Remy Bowden if anyone else would like to help support the community and keep the channel going then link is in the description below and it would be greatly appreciated apart from that let's get into it so I've made a voting channel first of all uh, just making the permissions be nothing except from um, well I've made default actually that's a bad idea <laughs> because then the people won't be able to uh, get in this channel let's say uh, members can uh, message the channel. They obviously can't change permissions. They can read. They can send. Actually, let's say they can't. They can read, but they can't send because it's a voting channel. All they want to do is be able to add reactions, send text, speech, and nah, manage. Nope. Embed links. Nope. Files. Read the history. Yeah. Mention everyone. No. Use external emojis. No. So basically add reactions at the bottom is up to you but what it does is if you have it off it means people can add to reactions that have already been added and if you put it on it means that people can add their own reactions like you know people can add a reaction from any other server or just any reaction at all they want so you limit this if you only want them to do for example the one that the bot sets up for it and I'll show you how to make the bot set up its own emojis um, so we'll just leave it like this all we want the person to be able to do is read the channel basically um, and that means they can still take part in uh, clicking on the emojis, so that's all good. So this will do, for, question, for example, for question mark vote, um, like, is um, blah blah blah, blah blah blah, question mark. I don't think I have the bot running. <laughs> I don't have the bot running. Let's uh, let's do that again. Um, so, no dot, question mark vote. Uh, is blah 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 question mark yes or no then we'll say yes or no so let's say we want yes um, now obviously the only problem well it's not really a problem but you can currently vote for both of them but that won't matter in the end because you'll just go uh, at the end of the results you'll just think alright have we got more yeses or noes whatever um, and obviously you might have other options and whatever so at the end it says results and it'll print the results you know how many ticks we got and how many crosses we got um, currently this is fixed to only using the tick and cross or whatever you want so as I said in the future we'll ex expand on this and make it more dynamic so I could put vote and then add a list of the possible um, like emojis to use back if I wanted to but, but for now this is fine so um, this is one and this is two and obviously all that means is it doesn't count the bot's original um, emoji because for me to add to the emojis the bot has to send it in the first place and we don't want to include the bots of votes if we want to get the true value of votes and what I mean about this uh, you know add um, reactions is we don't want people to be able to mouse over and then click this and then chuck in that for example so we want to limit them to only do these now because I'm the owner of the server or an admin or whatever I can do whatever I want I can you know, bypass those permissions but any other normal user in the server must only react with this and this. And obviously the benefit to uh, printing it rather than just leaving a embed with the votes on is that people can change the votes afterwards. So if you get a, some results and then you, for example, write down those results, then people change this. You don't, you know, it can change. Whereas this will be like telling you exactly, you could even put a timestamp before it saying at what date and time, uh, I know this has a timestamp, but that's only for when the first part was sent. You could say what date and time the results were collected on or whatever it's up to you to expand on it but let's get into the code it's not that much um, so what I'll do is um, I'm actually going to um, 
just for the sake of speeding up the video so I don't sit here and, you know, mess things up or anything. I'm just going to screenshot uh, my own code just to make, you know, life easier. Um, and then I will delete it. So let's, uh, one sec, let me delete the vote command. Delete. All right, uh, let's put that back. So I also need to uh, zoom in so that you guys can see this. Uh, even though the zoom does have a shortcut, it never seems to work for me. So I'm just going to accept that it doesn't work and just press the button. So we all only we need there. Yeah, all we need to set up is go to commands, add a new uh, vote. I mean, I can put poll because technically it's more like a poll than a vote. Um, it, it's up to you. I'm going to put poll. So what we need to do is we need to take the template and uh, copy it, and we're going to go through and put. Uh, class is poll, the command is, you know, poll, so it's question mark poll, and then we can just put, um, creates a basic poll. I don't know, it's up to you. So for the code, obviously you guys could have technically paused this video earlier on and just copy and pasted the code that I had put on the screen, but the point is, you should obviously watch me go through and explain it, or at least go through and try and understand it yourself, so that you know exactly how it works, but, you know, you could do that if you wanted to, I'm not going I can't stop you, but I would recommend watching in long. So the first thing we want to do is delete our own message so that the actual command saying question mark vote blah 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 goes away. So delete. And then we want to um, check whether they've put an actual vote category. So you notice how we've got this is like the vote. Um, so what we want to do is we want to say if args.length is less than one, because we need at least one, then we want to just return. We don't want to continue the code if uh, args.length is less than one. Whoops. And then we want to say, um, we want to create an embed, so let uh, poll embed equal new discord, whoops, discord.rich embed. And we're going to say the title, uh, so set title can just be, um, poll just to let them know what it is and then the description can be args.join at uh, every space well not, not every space sorry because it's a list args is a list of values a list of strings uh, well an array what this will do is at every element in the array it'll take it and then put a space in between it I could do dot I could do slash but space is the most logical so make sure there's a gap there otherwise it'll all be one word uh, and then we want to say let vote or let poll message equal await. So await basically means we're going to make this happen before continuing. So we're going to wait for the message object, the channel it was sent in, to send the vote embed or the poll embed. I used vote in my test example thing, but I'm going to use poll here. So um, basically this, this bit here where I'm typing these words, this code line and below will not get ran until this message is, message has sent. Now obviously code is executed very quickly, but one thing that isn't very quick is the internet. I mean obviously yeah the internet is pretty quick, but latency of like uh, even half a second when it comes to code will be a problem because if I had on the next line without this away to uh, do something with the message, the message might not have actually been received on Discord's end yet or on the user's end or so on, and what can happen is the message can be null because it hasn't yet, you know, got to the servers because of latency, even of like very low ping latency can still cause problems. That's why when you're doing anything like this where you need something to have successfully been sent and received for it to work, you use await. So await basically means do this, but take as long as you like. And then once you've done, go to this line. So we then want to say await um, poll message in brackets as discord.message. And the reason you do this is because um, rich embed, you cannot do dot react on it, but message, like a message type, you can do dot react on. And we need to react to it. Now, the weird thing is like polls, uh, sorry, embeds can be tr cast or treated as messages, but you can't use react on Discord embed. So this conversion will work. We can treat a Discord embed as a Discord message, and then we can call react on it. And we want to use our emoji. Now, um, I haven't actually got that so I'll show you how you do it. Uh, the way you do emojis like this is you would take the emoji like so, so if I drag in over the emoji you want, if, if it even lets me do it, 
I'll just have to do it like that. So you've got your emoji, um, and then before the um, emoji, you want to do a backslash. Now, for some reason, uh, my keyboard is being weird and doesn't have a backslash. Um, <laughs> I've had this problem for so long, I haven't decided to go buy a new keyboard or anything. Um, I don't know why, there's literally no backslash key on it. I only have forward slash. Like, but yeah, you need to use backslash. So go put a backslash at the front of the thing. So it's, it's a backslash and then your emoji. And you get this this kind of emoji, which is like the actual thing like that. It, it's it's a weird way of how it works. Think of it more as like, this is the Discord way. If you actually copy this tick and go and paste it, you just get that. Whereas if you paste um, the... Uh, Oh no, I've got rid of the thing now, haven't I? I'm an idiot. <laughs> you want to put backslash before it, and then this actually can go into your code as a an emoji like this. Okay, so that's gonna say, all right, send the poll embed, and then react to it with a tick, and then, I might as well copy this line, then react to it with a cross. So we'll go back to Discord and take that and then go get the name of the cross emoji copy that and go shove it into the code so we're gonna say reactive a tick reactive a cross so that lets the people then uh, add on to those reactions so that's how the bot sets up if you want to quickly see we'll do control shift B build um, one thing to note is um, make sure that in your TS config, strict null checks is false because otherwise you'll get some problems further down the line. So that that won't actually change how your code is run or anything. It just changes how um, it lets you build. There are certain things we're going to do that it doesn't like with strict on. So we'll just let it not be strict basically. Um, and then I think there's one other thing. Oh yeah, go to your uh, config and add the command just like you have in all the other videos. I'm not going to bother doing that, so I've already done it, uh, and I don't want to, you know, have to do the token resetting. So, what we can do is we can say node dot, and now we should, if I just do like purge 20 just to get rid of all these. Oh, is it not going to work? Purge 5. Apparently, these messages don't want to be deleted. Oh, it worked when I did that. Okay, so now we're going to do question mark poll um, test poll. I can't tell if Discord's just lagging right now. I feel like it is because we haven't got any errors in the code. Did that run? Have I put poll inside my... Um, config. Ah, it's not inside my config because I called it vote and now I've changed it to poll. There we go. I'm just a bit silly. So let's just rebuild that to make sure it's all right. Uh, and then I actually type correctly. All right, poll, test, poll. And we get our embed with test poll and it gets a tick and a cross. Notice how there's a delay after it sent that, till it sent that, till it sent that. And that, that is because of lat latency, as I said. So that's why we have to wait, otherwise we get problems. So you can react to it, but nothing happens and it kind of sits around, right? So what we want to do is we want to um, go down here and continue coding. So uh, there's not much more. What we have to do now that we've done this is we have to actually use the awaiting. So if we go look at the um, documentation so you guys get a better understanding of how to use it, we're going to use, uh, I think it's message.await reactions. There's the function. Click on it. We get the function dot await reactions. So it takes in a filter and then an optional options. Uh, we are going to use options. We're going to use a very similar layout to this um, template demonstration. So how it works is you, can, you define a filter, which is telling the function how we should allow messages because how it works is um, every time someone reacts to it it's going to do a check against the filter to make sure the thing that they reacted with is valid if it's not valid it'll just not add it to a list and then at the end it'll output that list so if you say oh you're only allowed to use 
uh, ticks and crosses, and someone goes and reacts with another one just because they can. If they well, if they were like an admin and they went and reacted with another emoji for whatever reason, it wouldn't actually get added to the output um, when we debug saying, uh, "Oh, we've collected this." So, in this case, for the example, it's saying we're only going to care about emojis that are using the uh, the OK hand, and we're only going to care about someone with that. That's obviously not an actual ID, but if someone had an ID of whatever you put there, it would only allow uh, OK hands from that person, for example. Um, in reality, you'd not want to limit it to any people, really. Maybe you want to limit the user's role. You maybe only want, uh, like, you might want to let anyone react to it, but only actually um, log people who are of the member role, or of of the, of the admin role, or something. You know what I mean? You, you can do whatever you want with this. Um, and then, obviously, in this case, that's limiting the actual emojis that you care about. We're going to be using that one. We're going to be limiting it to the tick or the cross. Um, and then we actually do the awaiting and you pass in an optional parameter here of options. So there's different options you can pass in. And one of them, the one we're going to be using is time. And that is just how long it is before we do the next part. Uh, this is 15,000 um, milliseconds. So that's 15 seconds. So you can change that if you want. You could make that a parameter to your command that if the user puts question mark, poll this 10,000, it means you'll use the 10,000 there and that's how long it'll wait. Um, if you want to did do it in days, you would have to... Uh, well, one thing about doing it in days is if your bot goes offline and comes back online, then it will have forgotten that it's awaiting that. So obviously you can only do like a day long vote if the bot's actually online for the entire day, otherwise it's a problem. So it's up to you. If you've got 24 seven bot and you've got it hosted and it's all up and there's no problems, then that'll work. But you know, maybe you just want an hour vote or 15 minute vote to get an idea of something or whatever. Um, and then yeah, this code gets run when it's successfully finished. And then if there's any errors, we get the errors and we don't crash, we just log it. So we're going to be using this. Let's take the code because I know a lot of people in this server and just on YouTube in general, because I used to do this, they'll just copy and paste code. And obviously when you copy and paste code, you get errors. So because I know some people are not going to listen and they're still going to copy and paste code, I I'm going to copy and paste some code here, but I'm going to go through it and explain how you would, you know, tweak code if you just copy and paste it because you want to make sure it all works and you don't want to just go around copy and pasting blindly. So. We're going to obviously tweak this to how we want it, but it's just nicer to not have to type it all out, I guess. I, I wouldn't recommend doing this, at least not a lot, but, you know, I can explain it. So constant means once it's declared, it's never going to change. So once we've set it here, uh, it will never change. That's just, you know, you could make it a variable, but then you might change it. it it's just a safety check. You don't need it, but I'd, I'd still put it. So filter equals reaction and user. These are two variables that it, the filter is allowed to um, refer to. So... If you look here, I think, um, well, we'll have to do some more changes before we get this IntelliSense working um, because it's TypeScript. So like, if we went into reaction and said it's of type discord dot uh, message reaction, yeah. We, we actually don't want the user. We're, we're not gonna be using the user's ID, so we don't need to take it in anyway. So let's just get rid of that. Um, and we don't want the okay hand. So I'm gonna change the okay hand for a tick and then we're going to use um, the um, log logical operator. Um, these, if it even comes up, so you guys know what I'm on about. These, um, you might know where these keys are on your keyboard. You might not. They look like eyes, but they're not eyes. So if you ever see me in copy, then we're not using eyes. We're using um, these logical operators. So if you put two of these together, it means or. Now, if, if you've come from like a Python background, you'll be used to just typing, if it's equal to this, or it's equal to this, but that's not gonna work because or isn't a thing. Uh, you have to actually use two of these. Whoops. What am I doing? <laughs> I've messed up. Um, so what it says is, it will allow the message if it's equal to this or reaction.emoji.name is equal to um, this. Now, the triple equals is like another safety check. It's not compulsory, but it's recommended if you can. Uh, triple equals means of the same type as well. So it has to be um, exactly that. It can't be something that equivalates to that because maybe there's another kind of tick emoji. I don't know how it would work exactly with emojis, but you can do that and it's safe. If you did two equals, your code would work fine. Don't worry. Um, and then now that we've declined, declared the filter saying, we only care about messages that are ticks or crosses, we then want to actually get those you know, messages back after the embeds, uh, after the uh, poll is done. So we want to store our results in a variable. So const results 
is equal to um, a wait because we want to wait till it's done. Um, we're actually going to get rid of this dot then and dot catch to be honest. So we're going to wait until and it's not um, message dot await. It's um, poll message is the embed that we're awaiting reactions on. Um, but we have to treat it as a Discord message, just like we did earlier. So as Discord dot message and put it in its bracket. So we're going to treat the message as a well the embed as a message. Await reactions on it. Pass in the filter and the time is you know how long we want to wait for it. So let's say ten seconds. So we'll just change the five to a zero. So you've got ten thousand uh, milliseconds, ten seconds. And then down here, we'll say, all right. Once we've done, we want to uh, send the results to the server. So we'll say message object dot channel uh, dot send. I mean, let, let's make a results embed. Uh, let results embed equal new discord whoops discord dot rich embed and we'll say uh, set title poll results dot set description um, results for the poll um, And then we'll say the poll is um, args dot join like that. You could equally just store that as a variable because we use it in two places. The general rule with uh, storing stuff as variables is if you use it in more than two places, use a variable like to store it. But if you're only using it in two, then it's kind of okay to get away with it. But some people will say no. If you're using it more than once, you need to use a variable. But in, in two places, it's not the end of the world. Um, so results for the poll bloody blah, blah and then dot add field oops don't use a semicolon there dot add field and then we can say um like the tick results so we say uh tick colon um and then you know this how many votes so we want to say um we need to use the back ticks for it to allow us to just put the inline uh variables like so. So in here, we want to say results dot get, and we want to get all of the ticks, and that'll be a list. So we then say dot count to get how many there are in the list, and we subtract one because we don't want to count the ones that they put on here. We don't want to count these, so we take one off. Um, then we go to the next line. Now, what's happening here? An argument for value is not okay. So add field needs a title and a like value. So um, what we could do is we could put um, the tick as its own thing, and then use the back ticks, and then put that there. Yeah, that would that would work. Um, and then say like that many votes. Uh, copy paste, put the cross in there, put colon to be consistent, put the cross in, whoops, put the cross in there. All right. Um, and then right at the end, we need to say message object dot channel dot send results embed. Um, and as well as sending the results embed, we want to, re uh, we want to then say poll embed no, sorry, poll message dot uh, delete. But because it's a, an embed, we need to treat it as a discord dot message for it to actually be able to be deleted. Um, discord dot message. And that should be it done. Uh, let's go test that. So if we go build, whoops, I hit my mic, sorry. Um, no dot. And let's go hope it works. So, uh, question mark poll um, is red better than blue? Poll is red better than blue. Uh, let's say yes. All right. Yes. And then when it's done, after 10 seconds, fingers crossed if I've done it right. Has it been? Oh, there you go. Poll results. Results for the poll is red better than blue. Um, tick, one vote. 
crosses zero votes and there you go so uh, obviously with this you can change the embed colors you can pass in the time you can pass in the emojis and have it loop rather than hand coding uh, hard coding two things I will probably go ahead and do that actually at some point, but not in this video because we've already gone on long enough. I uh, hope you like this video and build your own systems out of this. It's a pretty cool system. Um, and there's not much more else to say actually. I'm quite proud of that. I quite like that. Um, so yeah, if you do like the channel and you haven't already, then obviously feel free to leave a like and subscribe. It would mean a lot and help out. Um, we also have the Discord server, which is a link in the description below. Um, check out my Patreon if you feel like you want to help support even more. But apart from that, thanks for watching and goodbye.